give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Good evening. I'm Arlene Williams. This is Prayer and Praise Report. I greet you in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm here today to share with you the many things that the Lord revealed to those that follow him, that seek him. I seek after him, and I have learned of him many things. And I'm just glad to be able to be here today to share with you some of the wonderful things that he does and that he has done. And now I'd like to uh, say a word of prayer. And after that, I have a praise report. And after my praise report, I will be sharing a few words of scripture. But first, let us pray. Holy Father, we look to you. We look to you for all things, for you are all our help and all our stay. We thank you today for your many provisions. You are our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We thank you, Lord, for mercy and grace. We thank you, Lord, for the strength in our bodies, and we thank you for the healing of our bodies, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this day, and we ask that you would bless each man, woman, boy and girl that is tuned into this program that you would strengthen them, that you would encourage them. Father, that you would supply all their needs. And Father, it's my prayer that many be saved, for they must hear the word of God. And when they hear the word of God, they may be saved, those who believe. For you have already spoken that whosoever believeth in you shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. We pray, Father, that many will be saved and many will inherit eternal life. Thank you today for all that you do. Thank you for who you are, Lord. Thank you for being our, our caretaker. Thank you for being the one that blesses us and keep us and lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. For it's in Jesus' name I give you honor and I give you praise. Amen and amen. Well, it's good to be here today. It's good to be able to share with you some of the blessings and some of the, the things that I have been taught and I have heard. I would just like to praise the Lord today for about three weeks ago, uh, I had a mini vacation. It was a surprise. My daughter asked me to go to Chicago with her and we met up with another daughter and we met up with a niece, and we traveled to Gary, Indiana from Chicago to see my 98-year-old Aunt Lily. And I didn't know that I would get to see her, but it was a nice uh, occasion to be with my daughters and to get to see Aunt Lily. And I praise the Lord for that was truly a blessing. And it is truly worthy of praise because I couldn't afford it, but someone else could, and the Lord made it all possible. So I praise him for that. And I praise him for many prayers that he answers. And I praise him for being the good shepherd that hears his sheep. I just praise him for that. He's worthy to be praised. And that's my praise report. And now I want to share a little bit about the power of God. And I was reading... Um, in some of the books of uh, the New Testament, but I was reading in the book of St. Luke, it's the last uh, chapter of St. Luke, it's the 49th verse, it's the 24th chapter. And it says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And it says, I send the promise of my Father upon you. And you know, that's a, a, a true promise because God is not a God that lie, can't lie. And he do send the power uh, of the Holy Spirit unto those that accept him. The moment we accept Jesus as our Savior, we are endued with his spirit and the power of God comes into our spirit and enables us to do many things for the glory of God. Of ourselves, we can do nothing, 
But the scriptures say we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And I thank him today because he gave me the strength to be here. And he gave me the desire to be here. He gives me the desire to share with you who are out there who may not know the things that God will do for those that love him, for those that seek him. I can remember many years ago, I was in the darkness of sin and I was seeking a way to have peace. But you know, there's no peace in the world. Only in God there's peace. God says, my peace I give. There's so many blessings. He gives us power. He gives us the Holy Spirit and he gives us his peace. And I just thank God today that being a child of God, I do have peace in the midst of my trials. And I do have power to overcome the problems and the things of this world that come against all of us. You know, I was reading uh, in the book of um, John, where in John 9, uh, the Lord showed, uh, John chapter 9, the Lord showed the disciples uh, his power when they uh, saw this man that was um, uh, blind. And Jesus passed by and he saw a man which was blind. This is the ninth chapter of St. John from his birth. And his disciples asked him, said, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus said, his parents didn't sin, not he. But this is my opportunity, I'm paraphrasing, to show you the work of God. He said, I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. That come, the night cometh where no man works. And the Lord showed them his power when he went to this man and he asked him, uh, did he want to see? And his eyes, he was blind. And when he spoke to the man, when he had thus spoken to the man, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said, go and wash. So the man went and when he came and came back seeing and the neighbors, therefore, uh, that knew him, saw him and said, Is this not he that was blind? Some said, This is he. Others said, It is like him. And he said, I am he. And therefore they said unto them, How were your eyes open? And he answered, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go wash in the pool. And I went and I received my sight. That's the power of God. That's the power that God gives those of us who love him and who, who have received him as our Lord and Savior. I'm thinking of another place in the Bible. It's in the book of Acts, and it's the ninth chapter, and it talks about a man who was uh, very, very much against uh, the b believers. In fact, his, man, his name was Paul. And we're looking at the ninth chapter of Acts. And it says that this man was so against Christians that he was busy trying to haul them up and put them in jail. And the book of Acts, it says in the ninth chapter, the first verse, it says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatening and slaughter against the Christians, the disciples of the Lord went into the high priest and desired a letter of him uh, that he would go to the synagogue. And if he found any in this way that were serving and believing in God, whether they were men or women, he might bring them to bond, to bound, bring, he might bring them bound into Ju Jerusalem. And so he got the letter and he went on his journey and he had other people with him. And I'm sure they were helpless to get these disciples and believers in the Lord, just bound them up and drag them into prison. And uh, so as he was going down the road to Damascus, he came near uh, a, a road and then he began, he fell down on the ground. He heard a voice that says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he saw, said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. You persecuted the Christians, you persecuted the Lord. And he said, what do you want me to do, Lord? 
And the Lord told him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told you what you will do. And he arose, but when he arose, he was blinded by the light. He saw the light, he heard the voice. The Bible said the people that were with him did not hear the voice. But when he came to the city, uh, uh, he came to a street called Straight. And uh, it said, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight. And inquire in the house of Judah for one called Saul, a Tyrus, for behold, he prays. There was a man named Ananias that the Lord spoke to and told him to go to the street called Straight, and he would meet up with Paul. And when he said, you will find him because he's blind and he's uh, a chosen vessel for me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Israel. And Ananias said, but Lord, he's the one that's persecuting the Christians. Why should I go to him? He says, I have great things that he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias was obedient, and he went and he met with Paul. He said, Brother Paul, the Lord Jesus has appeared unto me in the way as thou comest, and has sent me that thou might receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately, uh, Paul received his sight. He went and started preaching uh, straight away to all those people that he had talked about against the Christians. And to even the Christians that knew him, uh, knew about him, he went and started preaching about Jesus Christ, that he knew now that there was a God, and he had touched him, and he went about preaching. This was the power of God that he received when he... Uh, was on the road to Damascus on his way to destroy the believers. He became a believer, and God used him mightily, and the power of God worked greatly in him, and he works greatly in those of us that love the Lord. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can pray for the sick, and they will be healed. We can pray for a sinner, and they will come to know Jesus Christ. And this is the will of God that those of us that love the Lord do the work that he sent us to do, like us here in the scripture about Paul who was on his way to destroy the Christians. Immediately, the power of God transformed him. And he began to be a great witness for God. And he was used mightily for God. And that's the mission to us Christians. We are sent to go into the world and preach the gospel to all creatures. We are sent to teach and tell and share with others what the Lord has done for us. We are empowered to tell others the great things about Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who came and shed his blood on Calvary, that whosoever believe in him might have everlasting life. And I am sure that there are people today who need the power of God in their life. I am sure there are families that may not have mother, mother, father, or anyone in the family that know Jesus Christ, but mother, you can become a Christian. Father, you can become a Christian, and you will have power to encourage others. The Lord will use you to encourage others to come to know him. You know that drug addict out there that's on drugs? and can't overcome such a terrible addiction. There is power in the name of Jesus that you can overcome. For the alcoholic who must have alcohol, there is power in the name of Jesus that you can overcome alcohol. The Lord Jesus Christ came to save sinners, to set us free from the things of this world that is destroying us destroying our children, destroying our families, destroying marriages. It's just a destructive way that the Satan has, has used all the evils of this world to cause us to be weak and cause us to feel like there's no way out. But there is a way out. Jesus Christ is the way out. 
And that's why I'm here to tell you this today, that there's a way out of your weakness. There's a way out of your sorrow. There's a way out of destructive living in the name of Jesus, if you will just accept Jesus. And the Lord has promised, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. We that know the Lord must lift up the name of Jesus and share with you that are walking in the darkness of this world, trying to find the light, that he is the light, and we are his witnesses, that you can be an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. I was a sad young woman. I didn't have any joy. I had a lot of problems. But today I still have lots of problems. But the joy of the Lord is my strength. I received the Lord by, by faith, and now I walk by faith. And I have seen so many situations that were impossible to be changed by the power of God. I want you to know that there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in salvation to change men and women, to change Paul, to change the blind man who could not see and say, I once was blind, but now I see. You too can be that person. And it's a simple act just by you receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you can pray this prayer after me. Lord, I'm a sinner. I believe that you died on Calvary's cross and shed your blood for my sins. Forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and save me. If you pray that prayer, you are saved. And we welcome you to the family of God. And we welcome you to the many, many benefits. There are many benefits in knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. And one of them, the main one, is eternal life. And I pray today that you will soon join up with a Bible-believing church and serve the Lord. Now we're at the end of the program, and I'd just like to leave you with a blessing. It says, um, in the book of Numbers, the Numbers uh, chapter 6, I believe, and it says, uh, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face a smile upon you, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>